What happens if you lose everything? Like not in a, I forgot my password kind of way. I mean, literally lose it to a natural disaster, a theft, or maybe even a spilled coffee. Today we are talking about privacy friendly cloud backups because security is not just about protecting from hackers. It's also about resilience when the unexpected happens. Welcome to day seven of my 30 day security challenge, the month long series designed to help you take control of your privacy and security online every single day for the next month with a few little breaks built in because you know we all deserve breaks we're adulting here we are tackling one small practical thing you can do to make your online life safer you can follow along with the checklist and the blog version over at shannonrmorse.com or just hit that playlist on my channel and go day by day step one why backups matter now here's the thing no matter how secure you are things are gonna go wrong hardware fails phones get dropped hard drives crash. Natural disasters can happen. I used to live in earthquake country a few years back, but I've also lived through hurricanes, tornadoes, forest fires, you name it. And sometimes it's not nature. It could just be human nature. Somebody could steal your laptop or you might accidentally leave it in an Uber. One time I left a camera, a digital camera in a taxi during a vacation and I never got it back. I lost all those photos. So when these things happen, your photos, your videos, documents, work could disappear forever unless you have some kind of solid backup plan. And here's the thing, most cloud services are not zero knowledge. That means the company can technically access your files, whether it's for AI processing or content moderation or compliance reasons. That is why today we are setting up a privacy-friendly cloud backup, one that encrypts your files before they leave your computer, so only you have the keys. Backups are so important. They give you redundancy, multiple copies of your important files, so even if your main computer is toast, your data is not gone forever. So what is this zero knowledge thing. Well, zero knowledge means the cloud provider has zero access to your data. They can't see your files. They can't see your passwords, your encryption keys, even if it's subpoenaed. That's the gold standard for privacy in 2025. Whenever you evaluate a cloud service that you're potentially going to become a customer of, look for these three phrases in their documentation end-to-end -end encryption, zero knowledge or private key encryption, and local encryption before upload. If it's missing any of those, your data is probably not fully private. It might be, maybe they're just terrible at advertising their security protocols, but it's really worthwhile to do your research here. Step number two is the golden rule of backups. I learned this from somebody I worked with many, many, many years ago, and I've always followed this rule since then. So follow the three, two, one rule. Three copies of your data, two different types of storage, like your computer or an external drive, and one copy off-site. That is where the cloud comes in. That's because the first two copies could get destroyed in like a flood, but at least you have the cloud copy, which is somewhere else. Now, personally, I'm a little bit paranoid. I keep four backups. I have my local copy on my computer. I have a daily backup to my network attached storage. I have a seasonal backup of a hard drive stored in a fireproof safe. And I have one encrypted cloud backup just in case the rest fail. Step number three, choose a privacy friendly cloud provider. Now the key here is gonna be privacy. Not all cloud backups are created equal. Most of the big names that offer pretty cheap or free backups are not zero knowledge providers, which means they could technically see your files. Instead, look for zero knowledge or no knowledge providers. That means the company has no access to your encryption keys or your passwords, only you do. Now luckily in the year of our Lord 2020, 25, there are several excellent options for encrypted privacy first backups. The one that I love is called Spider Oak One. It's my personal go to. They offer true zero knowledge storage, AES 256 encryption, automated backups across multiple devices. I've used them for years and they have been rock solid. I highly recommend Spider Oak One. Then we have Proton Drive from the same folks behind Proton Mail and Proton VPN. So if you already have an account for Proton VPN, you might as we'll check out Proton Drive too. Fully encrypted file storage that's great for smaller backups. 
that one's a great one to recommend as well. Then we have sync.com, which is based in Canada. So it's outside US's data retention laws. It's easy to use. They also offer personal and business plans. We also have Trezoret, at least I think that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, I've been recommending this one as well for years. It's fantastic for teams or for collaboration. It's also Swiss based. So you get those Swiss based privacy protections and they have strong encryption. Of course, there are other ones out there. So if you have recommendations, please drop those in the comments down below. And if you already use traditional cloud services like Dropbox or Google Drive, or maybe you just need to budget accordingly and you don't want to purchase a plan with one of these encrypted end-to-end -end encrypted um, cloud service providers, you can still make your Dropbox or Google Drive encrypted and private by encrypting your files before upload with tools like Cryptometer, which is free and open source, or Veracrypt for disk level encryption. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. And subscribing is very simple. It's also a free way to support small businesses, small channels, and smaller creators like myself on YouTube. If you are following along with the challenge, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss tomorrow's video. You can also grab the full checklist and a daily recap over at shannonrmores.com. Big Patreon shout out too to my s'mores. You can join them and support my channel by going over to patreon.com slash shannonmorse for perks like early video access. And we always like to chill and just chat about things on my private discord. The private discord is only for patrons too. So it's super fun. It's a very nice, small, like close knit community. I really enjoy it. As usual, all the videos on my channel are free to watch. And I thank my YouTube members and my patrons for making that possible. Step number four, set up automated backups. Once you have picked your provider, it is time to automate. Backups only work if they actually happen. Duh. <laughs> Download the app or the client software for your chosen service and for your specific devices. During setup, select which folders to backup. For example, maybe your documents, photos and videos, financial or tax files, work projects. You probably don't want to back up your entire operating system because that would be a ton of wasted space and we are paying for the cloud providers space. So just choose the things that you really need to back up. Then schedule automated backups weekly or daily. Just make sure you aren't relying on remembering to do it manually. Set it and forget it. The goal here is redundancy without stress. I know that some ISPs only allow you to do a specific amount of data transfer per month. Uh, I used to be on, I think, a Comcast account and they had a data limit per month, which was very hard when you stream a lot of videos and you play video games. But I was also backing up stuff to the cloud and I was uploading videos. So that was a lot of data going back and forth. So you can limit the automated backups that you choose to do to recur every week or once a month, whatever works best for you. I do mine daily now because I have unlimited data transfers for my new ISP. If your cloud service lets you store file versions, keep that turned on too. That can save you from ransomware or accidental deletes because there is nothing worse than realizing you just synced a corrupted file to every single device that you own. And for extra safety, make sure to follow it back with that three, two, one, rule. Step number five, strengthen account security. Even with encrypted backups, your account itself still needs protection. Use a strong, unique password for your account with that cloud provider. Your password manager can generate one if you are already using a password manager. Enable two-factor authentication or better yet, use a hardware security key like a YubiKey, especially if they allow you to do so. Download any recovery keys or backup codes and store them somewhere safe like your fireproof proof safe or an encrypted password vault and turn on end to end encryption if it's not already on by default. A pro tip, double check your provider's privacy settings. Make sure data sharing, usage analytics, or performance reports are disabled. Also, just a disclaimer, Ubico is an ongoing sponsor on this channel. They are not sponsoring this video specifically, but I use their products constantly for all my logins, including cloud backups, and they make it nearly impossible for anyone to access your account without the physical key. You can grab one of those over at ubico.com. Step number six, test your backups. Trust me when I say this, you do not want to wait until there's an actual emergency to find out if your backups work. So do a test restore, 
about once a month or so, download a random file from your cloud backup, open it to make sure it's complete and uncorrupted. And if it looks good, you could test a few other files, make sure they're good too. And if everything looks good, then you should be in the clear. If your provider has file versioning, most of them do, make sure that you can access older versions in case of ransomware as well. Now, just a quick heads up about 2025 cloud trends. A lot of major storage providers now use AI powered scanning for content safety or recommendations. That means that even if your files are private, their AI may analyze metadata, file names, or thumbnails. Zero knowledge services do not do this, or at least they shouldn't. That's another reason why they are worth it. Also, make sure you're watching out for AI assistant integrations that try to summarize or categorize your files. Those kind of features can create secondary data copies in unsecured environments. Always turn off smart organization, cloud sync insights, or AI cleanup options. And that's gonna be it for day seven. You have just set up a private encrypted cloud backup, giving you peace of mind that your data stays safe and private, even if the worst happens. Tomorrow for day eight, we are gonna tackle one of the biggest security habits of all, that is password management. I know, I keep on talking about password managers and we haven't gotten there yet, but it's a really, really important task. We're gonna talk about the best password managers for 2025, how to generate strong logins, and which ones to avoid. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Grab your 30-day security challenge checklist over at shannonrmorse.com. I am Shannon Morse. Stay smart, stay secure, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, y'all.